Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bikini and the Brain podcast with the lovely Ashley Kaltwasser. Hi, they call me the Bikini around here. They do. And my name is Adam. And let's jump into it. <laughs> yeah, I threw it's you for a curveball. I threw like you for a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're jumping in. So today's episode, Ashley asked some questions um, on IG. And we had, or actually some people asked you questions on IG. Yes. Yes, that's how it yes. went. And we have some, just some kind of hot topics, hot topics. Yeah. Yes. So these are topics that aren't really, there's not enough substance to make a whole podcast out of, but they're also not short enough just to do a whole bunch. So we picked out six mini topics and they're kind of hot. Yeah, I think these so. hot topics, yeah, you know. I think so. My phone was physically hotter. Yeah. The temperature. When I sent yes. it, yeah. <laughs> totally. In fact, um, we had to turn up the AC a few notches <laughs> exactly. for this podcast because they're so hot. So hot. So speaking of these hot topics, what's let's the first go ahead one? and get into it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's my so. segue. My segue is that obvious though. <laughs> let's, let's get right into it. I'm still we're like two hundred episodes in. My this segues is, are still like episode one levels. This go. is this is gonna be a great <laughs> podcast today, guys. This is a good podcast. This is, Unlike the others that uh, are just mediocre. Yes, this is a good one. This will be in the upper ten percentile of our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Versus last week, which sucked. <laughs> hey, we're getting better. It's only uh, like two hundred podcasts later. We're yeah, we're okay. Finally now. the hang of it. <laughs> so the first little mini topic. Um, USA versus overseas bikini. What is the difference and why? So I think the first thing off the bat, I noticed the biggest difference between USA versus overseas is the posing. Oh my yeah. goodness, the posing is quite different. I feel like sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes there's like a learning delay over there or like trends start here and they don't reach overseas until later, if that yeah. makes sense. So, for example, um, you know, when Kimber competed this year at the UK show, I, you know, I watched the show and I watched some of the competitors and they, they do pose differently. And I feel like some of their posing are, like I said, just like a little bit delayed in what they do and what they don't. For example, in the USA, we were very much like, it was a very much a thing like, don't like rub yourself or touch yourself when you're posing the little booty swipes. We were talking about it with Lisa. <laughs> we see less and less of that now, but overseas there were still some girls that were like doing that you yeah. know like the the whole like using your fingers to like rub up your like midsection and then like swiping the your butt i saw some of that in her show <laughs> so don't do that but um that's just an example of like i feel like sometimes the trends don't hit overseas uh as fast as they do here yeah and you'll also see a lot more hand stuff a lot hand more stuff. hand filleting around, like, you know, where you'll come out with big hand gestures. Oh, yes, you're right. The, the big hands. More ki you'll get kisses over Oh, overseas. yeah, the kisses. You don't do that in America. There's no American bikini competitors that, like, do the kiss when they the say goodbye. The kiss and send. Yeah, the kiss and send. <laughs> kiss, kiss and send. send. Kiss and send. One for you, one for you. <laughs> in the bow. This guy's in the audience. They're just like. <laughs> Catching them all. <laughs> Somebody came in with a big old net. <laughs> Catch it all. Got to get them. Sell them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> there's that, and then the other the other part of it is um, there's always a like a delay, like you're saying, yeah. In um, not just in the the posing and like the the mannerisms and stuff, but also in the the angles. It always seems like it's like a one year mm -hmm. angle out or one year out of like them catching up, which is strange because there's so many. There's so many YouTube videos and stuff like that, like the reviews that are always out there. There's a lot of people doing reviews now, and it should be pretty easy to catch up, you know, if you do your homework on it. So that should be probably because they're with like maybe in person trainers, probably, you know, yeah. And they haven't watched your, you, they have not watched an Adam Bonia bikini review. Maybe they maybe. need to get get to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, what I find too is that a lot of times posing coaches themselves, um, they might be retired bikini competitors and they're not staying as active at shows, so they're not seeing the new trends, and so they're still teaching old things for a while because they're just like, ah, uh, at this stage, maybe they've done it for five years. Like at this stage, I'm just kind of doing my job of what I know. But it's it changes so much that they're always just a little behind. So you'll see that here and there. So make sure you get with a, a good active posing coach who's still going to shows or still assessing shows or still doing video breakdowns or whatever, just to say, make sure that they're active and staying on it. And then the other thing is, and this is the hard one, and this is why I recommend every overseas competitor to like, you know, if you want to really be a name and, and start 
um, getting into that top 10 mix of, of the Olympia, you got to compete in the U S because the talent pool, though it's good overseas, it's very spread out overseas versus America. It's very, it's very good. Obviously it's stronger in, in America than anywhere. Um, but it's, it's very condensed. And so you'll have a, you know, a four hour flight from the California all the way to Florida and it's the whole country. Right. And then, um, Europe, you have some good girls in Japan, you have some good girl in China, you have some good girls, you know, they're all over. And so they're rarely doing, you're not condensing shows as much. So you have a good girl in, let's say Russia who kills it in Russia, but there's just a lot of people that aren't going to Russia. Americans aren't going there. The Chinese, the Japanese girls might so you're saying they're there. not really getting challenged over there. Not as much. The, the one good girl in that country or the two good girls in that country will tend to avoid each other or yeah. not just not run into each other. And then they get to America and then they're hit with everyone that's the same level. And then they get, you know, they find out where they're really at. Mm -hmm. So it's, it sucks because it looks like, and it's hard for me too, because I'm doing these reviews and I'm like, is this girl a rock star? It looks like she's a rock star. Dang, she won three shows. She's a rock star. And then she gets to America. And I'm like, oh, standing next to, you know, the real high level talent, she's actually not as good as it as I thought she was, right? So she still has this to work on, this to work on, this to work on. So that's where you run into that problem because it's just, it, I don't know if that makes sense, right? It's just, there might be three good girls in the country, but there's, you know, six shows and you don't run into each other. So it's like, yeah. it's just hard. So America is, is tough. It's a tough market and a lot of girls get a, a kind of an eye opener when they yeah. come here. And then you can really see where you're at when you're standing next to one of these top girls and you see them right next to them and you're like, oh, it's so obvious now that's right. what you need to work on. You know? Yeah, totally. And I feel like sometimes too, they definitely can come in more conditioned and I see why it's because I think like, you know, there's less chances overseas because there's not as many shows as there is here. So like if they're going to do a show, they're going to like probably overshoot rather yeah. than undershoot when it comes to like conditioning. So I find that a lot of times overseas, they will be probably more on the condition side. And when they get over here, they'll be like, oh, no, you're you're way too lean standing yeah. next to, like, the other girls. So it's one of those things, too, is, like, if you're not challenged and stuff, like, if if the good girls aren't really meeting up with each other, it's hard to see where everyone else is at. And, you know, it's, yeah, I, I'd probably do the same thing, honestly, if, like, in my country there was only, like, one show a year or something, I, I would probably overshoot my conditioning rather than yeah. the opposite, you know? Yeah, and that's so. something something that I'm really happy that Tyler's doing is he's doing videos now, too. And that's something he mentioned is that the lighting when you're not when you're not at the show and I do this too when I'm doing my reviews is the lighting does throw things off um, quite a bit. So sometimes um, you'll look someone will look a lot softer than they will. And the other day I did a video um, I did a video review of um, a, an athlete she was too conditioned and the lighting was too hard. So it like right. double hit her right. And so she looked way crazy. And then you see and so what will happen is someone overseas will see these pictures of really hard lighting. And then they'll be like, well, that's what I got to do because that's oh, how that yes. girl went. And I'm like, hey, it is different. You got to see these shows in person. I can do the best I can with the yeah. with the review. But it, I, luckily, I know a lot of these venues and how the lighting is. Um, but some of them make you look softer. Um, we, if, if the venue has lights that are lighting the audience as well, like you'll get these big um, expos or you'll get, we have one here at Alexis Park where it's like where there's lighting in the audience too the pictures will be more lit because of it. It's not just the stage lighting. And so when you get back filled pictures of lights, it, it makes everything look a little softer. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you'll expose. Um, but if you go to like the Olympia, all the lights are turned off in the audience. And so it's just the lights on the competitor and it's like perfect lighting. Right. So yes. it's, it's, you're not going to get that at, at every venue, especially because the audience in some of these venues is like moving all the time. So they can't turn the lights off. So it's just, so if you're basing it off of, x look like you have to understand it's just so different per per show and you really oh, have gosh. to get to shows and and see what your condition needs to be on you know so yeah lighting man it's it definitely it makes such a difference you can look like you're a month out <laughs> in your yeah. stage lean and you could be your leanest ever but if the lighting is like soft or flat lighting it looks like oh this overly lean girl now looks just perfect you know yeah. even though it might not be the case which yeah it's it's the, the best indication would be you being at the actual show, you know, honestly, standing next to those girls. Cause I wouldn't base your conditioning off of a show lighting, you know? Yeah. And gosh, it even messes with my head too. I'll be like, dang it. I, I swear I was yeah. leaner the show, but it's like, oh yeah, the lighting was just kind of flat and just one or 
2D or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, your venue, your venues, <laughs> like in Vegas, there's, there's, they have pretty lit venues. So yeah. we don't, we get hit flat, kinda, yeah, soft lighting, softer lighting. Yeah, I'm like, so. shoot, I promise I was more conditioned. <laughs> promise. Yeah. yeah. You guys need to remember that too. When you're sending in check-in pictures to your coach, you could kind of screw over the, the, your own prep. If you have like really hard lighting in your house and you're sending those pictures in, or if you have really soft lighting in your house and you're actually harder than you look like, so just make sure your lighting's right when you're sending in those pictures too, because it does make a difference. So yeah. I'm glad, I'm really glad that uh, Tyler brought that up too, because the, the, the reviews, we try to do accurate as possible, but that does change things based on the show and the venue of the lighting and whatnot too. Definitely. So, yeah, video is always bad. I could do a really good job with video because you could see like the, the muscle fibers and stuff, yeah. like, you know, you can see them a little bit better, but not all shows have that. True. So. And I think too, with overseas, the suits and the hair is quite different as well. Most of the time, mm -hmm. I feel like the suits, um, they do like more unique designs maybe and different colors. Like I think we saw one girl in an orange suit. She actually did pretty well, but, um, I feel like in, in the States you don't see that quite as much. And then the hair, I feel like they do a little more diverse styles. You might see some like half up, half down ponytail things, but yeah, I mean, not to say it's bad, but there's just a difference, you yeah. know? There's I would difference. say if you're overseas and you're really wondering, because maybe your friends are doing, um, you know, different suits and combos, and you're like, oh, that's pretty ombre suit. Like, just the safe bet is always, okay, let me pull up the top 10 of the Olympia. What color suits did they wear? Pick one of those, and you're going to be fine. <laughs> that's usually yeah. how I was like, I don't want to ever be the game changer on those things. I don't want to be the, the starter of that. Yeah. Um, because I want to stick with what's working, you know? Exactly. But... If, if you start seeing, you know, if Olympia winter starts going ombre to two different color tones and bikini, then, hey, it's probably, it's probably it's okay. Safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, so. Totally. So, I think, yeah, that was good. Let's go into the next one here. I like this one a lot. How to stay involved in the sport and not competing. So, one, um, what's the, what do you think the benefit of that would be, too? Motivation. Just yeah. being around like-minded people. Like, you know, and that happens to me too. Like when I'm in, in Ohio at home, I just feel like so secluded from my fitness peeps, right? So I think when you're around fitness people, like-minded people, the environment, you get that motivation just from being there. And I understand a lot of people aren't, you know, as blessed as us here in Vegas where there's fitnessy things all the time. Uh, but, you know, if you can make your way even to like a seminar, uh, even like Doing photo shoots, too, I think would be great just to kind of keep your physique in check. But even just watching, like, videos every day. I used to do that when I was in her. I, I used to, like, watch the Arnold uh, Amateur on replay, like, every day. You know what I mean? Just to kind of put my mind, like, to a motivated place. That's cool. I like that. There's, um, you know who I know who, did, who would do that was they would play. There's a video of, it was one of these big shows, and Sandy's judging in the video and she's she's just doing her judging and but she does she walks these girls a lot like she moves them a lot and she says you know face the front face the back walk to the back walk to the front. i guess it was like a hard show and it's on youtube somewhere and she keep she replays it but she replays it w in the posing room and so she acts like sandy's there and just plays that and goes through the motions of what like a real pro show would be mm -hmm. and so she just repeats it and repeats it and and goes through the the line changes and whatnot and it like it's like yeah it just gives me really good practice because it feels like i'm at a real show it feels like i'm i'm really there but um the same thing i can't the environment does make such a big difference because when it come is when it comes to like towards the end of the year and we're doing the olympia and we just got through july which is like the hardest month of prep which is you know you have masters nationals usa's um, you know, have you have Universe and you have North Americans and you have all the shows in between. It's really the toughest time for like coaching. It's like, man, it's it beats you up because you have to wake up. Especially a lot of those shows are like East Coast. You're waking up earlier to do like the check in. Um, so it's a it's tough when it gets to like this time. And then you go into right into the Olympia and you're like, OK, now it's high pressure. So you get done at the end of the year and you're like, man, I'm showed out. I'm like, I am just I need a break. I'm so tired. And every year I'm like. <sighs> I'm tired, man. This is, this is a tough year. I'm like, right. When he gets down to it. And then I need like a month of where there's no shows. I'm like, man, this is taking forever. Where are the shows starting? Yeah. Right. And then as soon as I, and it's so funny because it's, it's such a dumb thing, but it happens to me every year. It's been happening for like 15 years. And I'll walk into the first show and I'm like, I wonder how this year is going to go. I'm all excited and eager. And then I smell pro tan. And as soon as I can smell the tan, as soon as I smell the tan, I'm like, let's go. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, it's so weird. Like the environment just gets me so excited because I'm yeah. like, it's happening. I can smell the tan, like it's happening. And I just, it's just the environment of it, right? I'm like, let's do this, right? And it's so exciting again. 
um, every year. And it's the same repeat cycle, right? But the, that just shows you, you know, the environment of when you're around these things can just change so much. And for me, the, my trigger <laughs> is that protein smell. I just, I just love it. So, um, but other things that you could do to stay in, let's say you're one of these people who want to take long off seasons and in bikini, um, you know, you, maybe you need a year of building muscle. Well, you could always volunteer to pass out trophies. Uh, you could volunteer with your local promoter and, and help out. You could, um, you could be a test test to be a judge. That's, you know, just talk to your local promoters and you can test to be a judge. So how that works is you'll do a couple of shows that are just test judging where your, your score doesn't count. And then if you're doing good and they'll, they'll check your scores versus everyone else's scores, if you do good, then they would invite you to be a judge. They always need more volunteers at shows, even if it's just taking tickets or whatever, just being fun and saying hi and, and meeting your community. I've met like so many of my friends just from going to local shows and local coaches and posing seminars, like you said, and oh yeah, posing seminar. We have October 15th. We're going to have a big bikini posing seminar um, here and it's going to be a whole, a whole thing. Um, Sandy's going to be here. We have one this month coming up. What is it? The, what's the date of the one in Utah? I wanna, uh, the one in Utah is the 23rd, I believe. 23rd. So if you guys haven't got tickets for that one, that one is a, there's going to be enough where they can like a limited amount of space. So I don't even know if they're sold out yet or not, but that's going to be a full, like what, six hour day or something like that. It's a, it's a longer one. So it's going to be a good full bikini seminar. Ashley's there. I'm there. Kimber's there. It's going to be a fun one. So, um, yeah, go to things like that. And, um, what else is there? Is there social media is great. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, thank goodness for social media. It kind of connects us all, even though we're nowhere near each other. And, you know, sometimes, uh, even just following the accounts that kind of, um, promote the shows and and give summaries of the shows I think is great. I know you do bikini reviews almost every week where you kind of break down um, the competitors and and what they did good, what they didn't do good, all that. I think that's a great way. But, um, yeah, I think social media can be a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Um, but if you use it for good, it's, it's a good thing. And you can, like, what a cool thing. You can actually, like, connect with your favorite, like, competitor too. You know, I get – everyone gets questions in the DM and that's such a cool thing. Like yeah. somebody from the other side of the world is asking you a question and you get to kind of connect with them on that level. So although it may be a small little thing, it's still, it's still something worth mentioning, you know, and live streams you can purchase too from sh most shows, which is not the same as being there, but it's um, the best you can do, you know? So yeah. I think that can be a cool thing. Um, to kind of stay involved and just to keep your motivation high whenever your show isn't very close. Yeah. And then at the, like your local community. So ours is NPC Las Vegas. You can, no, it's not our NPC. Nevada. Oh no. On the hashtag. Is it NPC Nevada hashtag? Oh, I guess I didn't know you're talking about who uses hashtags anymore. Yeah, I know. No, on the <laughs> hashtag. So oh, I thought you're talking about the Instagram account. It's NPC Nevada. Yeah. Look up your local. So I know that NPC, um, Colorado is Colorado. So maybe it is NPC Nevada. So it's okay. NPC Nevada is the hashtag. So maybe it is. And there, yeah, you know what? I think you're right because there's NPC Texas, NPC California too. They all have their own hashtag. So I think you're right. It's probably I'm NPC sure Nevada. sure there's one for yeah. Vegas too. So you can look them up and then you could find local competitors in your area that are, you know, doing your same division as you and then reach out to them. Maybe you can have a workout buddy and that's how you make some, some good friends that way. Going to your local posing seminars. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, states have seminars. And so many people have made like best friends from, from it. That's, that's probably the thing I'm happiest about with like the coaching on the team is so many, we've had people get married. We've had people, um, we just have like lifelong friends and roommates and stuff just cause they met at our posing classes. Like I, I think it's been like three or four people have gotten married that like met at posing classes, especially when we used to have like the men's physique and, and bikini and stuff. And, uh, we met at a posing class. Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? You're like the... We, I was on, <laughs> the first time I saw a live stream was with Ashley in really? 2015 or 14. Oh. Yeah, it was... What was that called? The Periscope. And Periscope. Yeah, we were like using Periscope, which is like a basically Instagram live now, but a different one. And we're Twitter, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about how the world has... The world's gotten so much smaller, right? Yeah. We're all so connected. And I was like, man, this is crazy. There's people on here. I'm like, looking at them. I'm like, there's people on here watching us. And uh, I was speaking of which, I had one of those videos, the bikini uh, review videos. Someone translated it in Chinese and was like reposting it in social in Chinese. Is that crazy? Like, it's the world's so it's so connected. I love that part about it. So yeah. So yeah. So those are some things you could do. Um, but yeah, just stay with your local local community. Keeps you motivated. Keeps you 
keeps you engaged. It keeps you seeing who's coming up. Um, and yeah, and we can always use we can always use the help. NPC can use volunteers and, and use people at the doors and, and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, there's many ways to be involved, right? Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about structure and what structure thrives in different divisions. Because I think a lot of girls, especially when they first get into it, they're on the fence of what to do. Oh my gosh, should I do bikini or should I do wellness? You know, or should I do figure? And I think it becomes a little more obvious once you've been in the weight room for a while and you see how your muscles develop and maybe if you lose some weight and you can see what your structure truly looks like. Um, But, you know, I think there are some indications of which division would be best for you? Now, that doesn't mean it's it's like you must go to this division because you're this way, but I think like it might be an easier time for you for, for certain structures, you know? And I think it's, it's very accurate what you said. I think it was, um, I'm not sure what podcast it was, but a lot of girls, you know, most women are holding more body fat in their lower body. That's a totally normal thing. If you're one of those girls that complain, oh my gosh, my glutes... They're not tight. They're the last thing to, to get tight. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the real world. It's <laughs> like 90% of women will, that will be like the last place to get lean is your glutes, your tie-ins. Um, but yeah, most girls will carry more body fat in their lower body. That is normal. But I think a lot of girls get that. They, they think, oh yeah, cause my legs are thicker. I'm wellness. And I know you, yeah. you made a really good point about this. Yeah, you know what's funny is uh, there's an athlete, and she's funny. She posted, but I won't say her name, but she she was, like, laughing about it. So she, like, made a joke about it. And um, she was super – she's just, like, one of those more edgy, more cute girls. And she was just, like – she's, like, you know, when I first came to you, you kept, like, saying, I don't know if you're wellness, you know, and I was, like, fighting you on it. And then, like, six months later – and she said this, not me. She's, like, and six months later, I just – come to realize I just had a really fat ass. <laughs> I was like, I was laughing so hard. She was so matter of fact about it. Like she wasn't joking. She just like said it matter of fact. It was like the funniest thing. I was busted up laughing. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you, you did. <laughs> I was like, you had a little bit of body fat on your butt. And uh, I'm like, and now that it's gone, she's like, I'm definitely bikini. She's like, I was, she's like, why didn't you just say, I was like, well, you were very set on it. So I was like, well, we'll see. I kept saying, well, we'll see. <laughs> you know, so, and it came down to it. And when she lost all of her body fat, she actually still needed muscle on her glutes and legs for bikini. Mm. Right. But she just stored body fat. She's one of those girls that stored body fat, um, like had abs still, but oh, had, yeah body fat in her glutes like I mean if there's a way to store body fat that's the way you do it you know mm-hmm. and um but it was like the funniest thing to just it is a lot of women go through that in a small to a smaller capacity of course in wellness and so you have to get if you're going to be sure that you're going to be wellness one you have to one thing the first thing I'll say is if you want to do wellness you have to see a wellness girl in person that's the first thing I say you should do go to a wellness show you a pro wellness show. yeah pro wellness show because I feel like NPC it can be all over, all over the place yeah you get a lot of those girls who just softer in the legs and think they're wellness because yeah. they store body fat lower it, it go to a, a high level well actually every pro show i mean the gosh the show in in vegas here wasn't a biggest show but man those girls were good that at the one that we had the other day here now, those girls were crazy good um so go to a go to a show and then see them in person it's like okay do i want to look like that first like do i even want to look like that as the first thing and then it's okay what's the possibility of me looking like that and then on top, and then after you do that and you decide, okay, I want to do wellness, you have to lean out and then see how much muscle you actually have and how much of that is actually fat. So you have to pull back the curtain. We say, you know, got to pull the curtain back. Let's see what's behind this. Let's see what's behind the curtain, right? So you pull back the curtain and you say, okay, now am I closer to a bikini? Am I closer to wellness? And then you should probably talk to a, um, talk to a coach. I would say, talk to a coach, talk to even uh, a judge, you know, after the show and then tell them your goals. And if it's a, if it's a high level judge and they're honest, which honestly now I'm really happy with how the judges are giving feedback. They're, they're doing so good at the feedback. It's like, um, more raw, I would say more raw, but that's what we need. It's helpful though. More raw and helpful, you know? And they're saying, you know, they're saying things like, Hey, uh, the other day they were like, Hey, you could have, you got to do this. You got to do this. But even if you did that, you still would have lost to this girl today, you know? And I'm like, that's because she needs another year of growing. And I'm like, that's great. That's exactly what we need to hear. So ask the judge and say, hey, am I, me wanting to do wellness, is that realistic? And they'll look at you and say, hey, um, if you want to spend, you know, three, four years of building your legs, yeah. So then you have to go from there. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, this is the big question, right? What do I want to do in the industry? And if it's just have fun and build up a wellness body, then great, do it, have fun. But if you're saying, hey, I want to be the next Miss Olympia, I want to go as far as I possibly can and see what my my body will allow, 
and you got all the body fat off your legs and you're more bikini than you are wellness, then the odds are you're probably going to just be better at maximizing your structure if you stay in bikini because that's more of your true, your true physique. And it's the same thing for guys that are doing men's physique versus bodybuilding. Most of the guys that got into men's physique when they started as a kid, they wanted to be a big bodybuilder, but they ended up in men's physique because it just suited them better. But they're not like forcing themselves to be crappy bodybuilders. They'd rather just stay good men's physique competitors than being a crappy bodybuilder. And it's the same thing with wellness because people underestimate that wellness legs are, are really very close to, if not exactly, in some cases, women's bodybuilder legs. Like they're, they're big legs. They are muscular, muscular legs. So your joints will be a part of that. How you build muscle will be a part of that. Your density will be part of that. And then what your long-term goals are will be part of that. If you want to stay NPC, have fun with it. Get big, you know, get your legs big as you can and maybe you outsize the bikini a little bit. So yeah, there you go. There's my, my, there go. my tangent on that. But uh, there's also a few other divisions as well. Yeah. <laughs> Figure, I would say ours, most of ours feet. watch this as bikini. And, and yeah. And, 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 so we'll briefly go into it. Figure, women's physique, bodybuilding. Yeah. I think like figure and above, you got to be blessed with some good muscle genetics for sure. I mean, honestly, wellness too. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the, the growth of muscle, like for, for a figure and above, you really got to have some upper body for sure. Yeah. And I, I, I would say like, figure especially like think uh, when we're thinking of like actual structures and shapes they're built more like an upside down triangle mm -hmm. um very long uh clavicle actually a lot of them most of them narrow hips it's yeah. actually to their advantage because it makes their it makes their upside down triangle look even more crazy right you don't see much on figure like an actual like divot within hips and then you know as it, the curves they make from down below are their their quads, their quad sweeps. So that's another, you know, just another thing to keep in mind is like what kind of structure, like what, where are you able to put on muscle more, um, in what areas? And then obviously women's physique. You know, and, and, and well, before we go into women's physique, I want to cut you off real quick because you said something good the other day, um, uh, when we were talking about figure versus bikini mm -hmm. and, um, we were talking about an, an athlete structure and we we're like, Oh, this athlete is probably a little more, even though they're a bikini, they're a little more figure looking. But they didn't have the muscle. But they yeah. didn't have the muscle. Yeah. So it was like because her frame was X frame versus hourglass, like you're saying. Yeah. So that's a, yeah, that's a big part of it. So if you're a super X framed girl with narrow hips, probably best if you could build the muscle to go towards figure, mm -hmm. if your body is balanced symmetrically. And if you're more of an hourglass girl with bottom like your bottom half is just naturally bigger then that would be more of a wellness girl so yeah i just want to cut you off but i just remember yeah. you talking about it the other day and i was like oh that you're it's funny because we're, we're looking at this athlete and we're like i'm like yeah you know what you're right she is x frame but small is what yeah. it was yeah. so it didn't quite fit the bikini mold mm -hmm. perfectly but it was yeah so yeah it's kind of crazy right yeah yeah it is interesting because it's like sometimes you can fit like the structure of another division but maybe you just can't put on the muscle you yeah. know that's the thing you know in a perfect world we would just be like yep i'm going to train for this long and my muscles will look like this it's not always like that you know so figuring above you really need to have some at least some upper body for sure and it's it's funny because like some people can just put on muscle so easily and god bless them you know yeah. it's like they'll they'll pick up like a five pound weight and just put on muscle like, <laughs> not literally but you know the people that are just like yeah just naturally have it so you know just be aware of what what you're built for and that doesn't mean that you can't go outside what you think you're built for but you just might have a an easier time yeah, you know? it just comes down to how far you want to go. You know, yeah. you really need to, if you're one of these people that want to go pro and really want to excel, you have to figure this out. Yeah. You have to say, okay, what's my structure best suited for? What are my genetics best suited for? And then really put your workouts designed around that division. Um, but for everyone else, if you just want to look a certain way, like let's say I want it to be as big as I can because I want to be a bodybuilder. I don't fit the bodybuilder structure, but I could, doesn't mean I can't get as big as I want for fun, doesn't mean I, but I'm never going to get the Olympia like that, you know? So um, if I wanted to fit a more men's physique, it's, it's, you, train, you train a different way, you know? So that's the only thing is you want to invest your time the right way and, and, and if you're trying to go to the, as far as you can. Absolutely. Yeah. Post-show blues, Adam, what do you know about those post-show blues? Post-show blues are a do real you thing. Um, I, you know, I used to. I <laughs> used to, but... I was pretty active when I competed, so I didn't have too much downtime, but I, I should have, I should have taken more downtime. But um, back then it was, you know, when I was competing, it was like, it was just, it was like fitness modeling. It wasn't, you know, you didn't need to be shredded like crazy. It was a lot easier to do that. But nowadays 
men's physique guy, you know, you might be taking 18 months off to, to get, to get as big as they need to be. And that's a real post-show blues because people for the most part need, need a time-based deadline, you know, and that's where the post-show blues come up. You feel like, Oh, what am I doing? I'm not motivated. I don't have a show even on the books. I don't even know when I'll be ready. Like, why am I even doing this? My last show, I got fifth and I needed more muscle. It seems like I always need more muscle. And it's, I probably have to wait another year after I compete again. Like, so you start thinking it gets deeper and deeper and you get in that rabbit hole. Of, am I ever going to get out of this? Like this constant, you know, perpetual building season of doing a show and needing more muscle. And so um, it's a, it's a tough one. And there's a lot of ways where you could still um, have a time-based deadline without necessarily doing a show. And I think that's where people where people make the mistake, you know? Yeah, I think a lot of times it comes from as well, just like not having a plan afterwards. Like when I say not having a plan, just like, I don't know what I'm going to do afterwards and I don't know what I'm going to eat and I don't know how I'm going to train, just, you know, whatever. Because they think like once the show's over with, then uh, then everything just changes like completely, which it shouldn't. You know, you should just gradually kind of ease out of things. But um. Yeah, I feel like that happens, and then what really gets, like, a lot of girls get the blues whenever they put on weight, because it's like they're so used to seeing themselves stage lean, and they liked it like that, and now that they put on weight, maybe because they didn't have a plan afterwards and just went willy-nilly, you know, um, that can also kind of snowball, and that makes the blues even worse, you know, the the post-show rebound kind of situation and you know obviously a good way to overcome that was just just make sure you have your plan set in place to go to right after right whether that be your post show diet and your your training have a plan of what you're going to do okay I'm going to just ease out of the show like do I'm going to reduce my cardio by this and this and this rather than just changing everything completely because then obviously you're going to put on weight and you're not going to be happy and you're just going to get sadder and sadder yeah, that's the that's the tough one. It's a very short, and I, and we we touch on this a lot. Um, and when we have that seminar on the fifteenth, I'm going to do like a full post show diet thing, that uh, reverse diet type of scenario um, at that. But the, um, no, oh, not the fifteenth. You're right, the twenty third. Everyone, can I know the twenty third in Utah. <laughs> yes, in Utah, we're going to do a full reverse diet scenario. But the reality is, is that's probably where the more more post show blues come from. Anything you know, and it's unfortunate because it's when you get done with the show, I get it. Everyone wants to eat. And I always give everyone, hey, have your food on Saturday, have a meal, have your food on Sunday, check in on Monday, and let's just get your new post-show diet. Let's get everything ready. And um, let's let's get this going the right way. Um, but the problem is, is usually people take two to three weeks to to start figuring that out and start wanting to go on that post-show diet and like start realize, oh man, I'm up, I'm up 10 pounds already. I need to, I better keep it in check and like start doing this right. You know, a lot of times people just ghost their ghost their coach, and it's like you just don't hear from them. And you're like, hey, you know, where are you at? <laughs> like, what do you do? It's, you don't hear from them for six weeks or so. You know, it happens to me too. It happens to to the top coaches, to the bottom coaches. It happens to everyone. Um, you know, it's you'll get you'll get people just kind of disappear, and then they come. They'll reach out to you three months later, four months later, up thirty pounds, and then they're in a real bad place mentally because they they don't feel as good. If just a few weeks earlier, they were walking around in um, crop tops and feeling great and short shorts and taking pictures. And now they're wearing, you know, extra large shirts at the gym. They don't want to take pictures. And they, some of them kind of get, feel a little embarrassed that they gained weight, which is nothing to be embarrassed about. You know, everyone, almost everyone goes through it, but it is something like a learning lesson. And it's just that initial, they say the initial, so this is a cool saying I saw the other day. It said the initial six weeks of how you treat yourself post-show is going to, is going to determine how you treat yourself the 16 weeks before your next show. And so the, the six weeks of your next show, and basically um, it's true, you know, how you react the six weeks after your show is really going to dictate how hard your 16 weeks are when you go into the show, you know? And so the girls that you see that are like, oh, I'm doing two hours of cardio and I'm eating 800 calories and I'm wearing it like a badge of honor. And I'm like, well, what did you do that required you to do that? <laughs> Those first like six weeks after the show, what did you do there that's requiring this now, you know? And so it's a, it's a, we don't talk too much about the psychology of that, but that is a definitely big, big contributor to people having some like negative, um, negative feelings about competing. You know, I would say more of the negative feelings about competing where the people were like, Oh, competing ruined my body or ruined my physique or ruined me is those people who blew up post show because They couldn't control their diet for like two months. And like, they're like, and then they were like, Oh, I had to eat everything. My body needed it. And, and, and that really creates this bad, you know, repeating effect that happens from show to show. And you do it for a couple of years. And then at a certain point, 
it's just not worth getting ready for a show anymore because it's so hard to get ready for a show that you just don't want to do it anymore. And then you blame competing. And I'm like, no, it wasn't you competing. It was that you didn't manage it post-show right. And then you have a real bad, you know, that real bad post-show blues. So in the end, the the best thing to do, would there's a few things that I found that, that solved this problem. One is um, going through it once and realizing, okay, it totally wasn't worth it to get it off me, right? I went through that. I did that myself. So I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Um, two is spreading shows out throughout the year. If you're one of those people that need to, then you need to, you know, if you're someone who's like, no matter what, I just don't do good unless I have a time-based deadline. Okay. Well then you do your show and then you have another show planned four months, five months from there. And then you do that, you know, though it's not the best for having off seasons and growing, it is going to be a way to keep you in check the whole time. Another one is maybe you have a sponsor and you get lucky and you get a sponsor, you reach out to some sponsors. And even if you do like free content for them, and they call you in for a photo shoot. You know, they usually only give you a couple of weeks for a photo shoot. Hey, we're going to do a photo shoot here or maybe a month. And that keeps you in check too. I don't even think you need a sponsorship for that. Just connect with a photographer and have a photo yeah. shoot. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. There's there's always like um, small companies that are around. Maybe it's a local supplement shop and you could be like an ambassador for them. And they'll do, and you could just tell them, hey, I want to do a photo shoot for you guys every, you know, two months or something with your new product or whatever. I won't charge you. It just keeps me in check or whatever too. There's that option. Or like Ashley, you know, just, just do photo shoots. Um, and then what, what else am I missing there? I'm sure there's other things I'm missing. You know, just shows really. Yeah. The sign based headlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think uh, if we're looking at just like the, the blues, just trying to, it kind of circles back to the first uh, little topic, like how to keep, you know, yourself relevant when you're not competing, go to seminars, go, go be involved. I think yeah. just that motivation will uh, prohibit you from being sad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there's always a, we can always go over like tips to stay better on the, I know it's, it's hard because we always say, hey, just stick to your post-show diet, stick to your off seasons, right? It's hard, but there's always tips we can always go over and maybe we could do that an episode on like little tips you could do um, in the off season to make it where it's realistic, you know, for, mm -hmm. for some people. Some people don't want to stay, it's hard for them to stay clean all year, which is yeah. fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I do macro plans on my off season. I'll have like a macro meal per day or um, a free meal per week. And it's like, you know, it keeps people able to stick to it. Or like me, myself, if I'm, if I'm doing, if I'm feeling like I gained a little weight, you know, and I'm, I'm like, oh, I look like I gained like three pounds over this weekend because I went here, here, wherever. Um, then that week, like Monday through Thursday, I just go carb free, <laughs> increase my cardio that week. Like this little things, you know, just to keep it in check. So, but that's a whole nother topic. So, mm-hmm. So how do we pick the right coach, Adam? How Ooh, do we do that? You just call it. You There's just go to teamleadphysique.com. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I think, you know, everyone has like a different style or somebody that um, they think can motivate them the best or just get them in check the best. Some people like the tough love. Some people like the cheerleaders, um, you know, so feel out the coach to make sure their personality vibes with you first and foremost. But there's also some other things to look out for as well. Yeah. So I would say look at the, um, the check-in process too. That's an important one. So um, like us, we do a video response for every check-in that we get. So we do a video response and go over a whole thing. It could be, you know, up to, I mean, some of these can get up to 10 minutes or so. Video responses usually are like five-ish. Um, and some coaches will just do a text response. Like it's, there's a, there's a big difference. So with us, we'll try to do, like you ask your questions, we'll go over your measurements of the week prior, your pictures of the week prior, all these things, and then say, hey, this is what we need to change, this is why we need to change it, and you physically can see us changing your plans so you know exactly what's changing. Um, and then there's some people who are like, I don't want to sit down and watch a five-minute video every week. Like, I just want a text that tells me what to do, and we have, there's coaches out there that are like, you know, cut 20 carbs out of your plan, increase your cardio 10 minutes, talk to you next week. Like, that's literally some coaches. And people like it, you know, some people just like that, you know, and, and there's, that's sometimes it's more cost effective that way too. And sometimes it's not. Um, and so that's, that's going to be the first thing you have to figure out. What is it that you want? Do you want the super basic thing? Or do you want someone who's going to be more, um, give you more communication and more feedback, um, where you can ask more weekly questions where it's more of like that, that time, or do you even go past that? And are you someone that really needs a lot of handholding? And there's nothing wrong if you are, and you need that person who is, um, in a gym where you're working with them one-on-one, -on -one, maybe twice a week, and then you can ask your questions into your, your, um, your check-in in person um, at the gym. Now, the only problem with that is you're limited by who's in your area for something like that. You might not have a higher level coach where it will take you to your goals, never gotten anyone to that goal before. So that's where you run into that issue. But that could be, you know, you have to figure out what is it I need first out of a coach before you decide that thing. Because 
if someone was like, I just want to text back, I'm like, well, then we're not probably for you because we're going to give you, a, like, we don't have another system for that. We're going to give you like a five minute video. I guess we can email them back. But, you know, so, so there's all these different options on how people do their check-in. That's going to be the one that's important. Um, the, the next one will be, you know, looking at their um, athletes is probably going to be, if it's a bigger team or even a medium-sized team, we're like a medium-sized team. If you um, see some of their athletes in the gym, like talk to them and ask them about, you know, how their prep was. Are these one of the, are they one of the coaches that just, raise cal- raise cardio and cut calories um and push supplements like you know that's you could probably do that yourself you know that's not that hard to do um so are they are they using more of a systematic approach um i've seen some plans where the plan stays exactly the same for 12 of 16 weeks and then all of a sudden 4 weeks out the get calories get like cut in half and the cardio gets way up and that's just the way they do their diet right it's pretty pretty straightforward with like all their clients so you have to figure out what system works for you and what they're what you're looking for um, out of that coach what your long term goals are if they've gotten someone to those long term goals before um, and if maybe you're someone who wants you know a macro diet you can't stick to a food plan diet well there's the option of finding a macro coach who does that or the in between, we're kind of the in between because we give a meal plan that has um, options, but it's they're all clean options. So instead of it saying just chicken, ours will say you know chicken, but the equivalent fat of a steak, equivalent fat of a fish, equivalent fat of of whatever, and all these different options of turkey. So you have like you could pick one of those and make different combos of your meals. I like that way because it's still single ingredient foods and it gives people options. So it's kind of in between macro dieting and and full menu plan dieting where it's just chicken and asparagus, you know, or tilapia and asparagus. So look for those things. I would say that'd probably cover most of it. Anything I'm, I'm missing there? I would say, you know, I feel like a lot of coaches could give you some fluff words, you know, and say, yeah, I could turn you pro and that. <laughs> I think it's good to have a realistic coach. Um, so I think that's something to look out for, you know, um, somebody that's honest with you and it's not going to just um, tell you sweet nothings. <laughs> like, yeah. I can get you pro. It's like, you know, we try our best to be realistic with the athletes and stuff, but you know, I think some people hire coaches cause they tell them what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear, you know? Yeah. It's a tough one. And it's tough. Cause I've, I always try to be honest because in what I've found is that in the end, they're going to find out, Yeah, you know, and if, they're going to be extra mad that they wasted time. <laughs> it's yeah. It's you're mad at you now because you're telling them they're not going to be ready for this show or they're going to be really mad with you later when they find out themselves at the show that they're the least fit person at a fitness contest right so it's like yeah you better be i found i've got i just gotten to the point where i'm just tougher about it and i'm like eh, it is what it is you're not you're not there um or i have inquiries where someone will be complaining and, and I'm, i tell them straight up when they when they inquire they're like yeah i am you know i had i had one the other day and this girl was like yeah i'm eight weeks out my coach is killing me i'm doing 45 minutes of cardio and i'm eating 1550 calories and and i'm like killing you (laughs) like what do you like just so you know you're doing prep here like 1500 calories in 45 minutes of cardio you know is pretty standard like if you think of a a health and fitness diet like you're just getting healthy and fit you're probably going to be doing 30 minutes cardio a day 25 minutes cardio a day and then eating you know probably around the same calories for someone who's you know five five 120 pounds 130 pounds that's pretty standard fitness stuff like if you're and i tell them like hey if you're expecting me to give you less calories or less cardio and more calories and get better results. I'm sorry, but that you're not thinking of fitness competitions as what they are because they are not supposed to be comfortable. You're, yeah. it is extreme sport. So like you, sometimes I tell people that and then it's, you sometimes you'll hear back from them and they're like, Oh, thank you for putting that in perspective. And sometimes you're just like, right. you're like he's a mean, <laughs> he's a mean. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing is it's the sport is tough. So you're realistic. You have to have realistic expectations too. Um, are you one of those girls that's going to have to really suffer to get in shape? Um, have you done things in the off season that are now going to require you to suffer in shape at your own fault? And if so, it's, is it your, really your coach's fault? Um, are you just genetically that person who's really stubborn in the tines and it's just, you, you're going to have to get your tines a lot bigger and it's going to be a lot more work and diet down really hard. Like there's just a lot of different scenarios and you have to be realistic. You can't look at, um, you know, you could look at Ashley and be like, I want to be the next Ashley. And I'm like, believe me, everyone would love to be the next Ashley if they could, if they could, you know, be in that mindset of eating good all the time, if they, without problem, if they could stay relatively lean all year, they compete often all the time. Like not everyone's built that way. Um, unfortunately, but you also, also can't use the excuse that you're not built that way. If you've never tried, that's the other thing, you know, I'm like, that's that's what happens with a lot of people. I'm like, have you even tried doing that? Or have you always just done a show and then blown up? 
Like, how do you know you're not like that? How do you know you're not on that level? Or you just say you're not, you know? Exactly. So yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into that mm-hmm. coaching thing. You know, there's a lot. That so thing they call coaching. That yeah. Coaching thing. <laughs> but I mean, we're all, we're all going to be out of business because of AI in like two years anyway. So whatever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, there's no, I don't think that would ever be able to figure that out. It's too, it's, there's too much mental part involved. Yeah. Yeah. There's too, true. there's too much mental part involved. Right. So on that side of things, Absolutely. there's already, there's been AI programs for coaching for years already. Uh, yeah. It's so funny. I, I hear that from other coaches. You were like, dude, there's, no, no. you're good enough you'll adapt who's so, your coach ai yeah. is my coach. microsoft it's <laughs> funny so sometimes i'll hear people bring up like oh should they make another division so this is our next little topic should they make another division because bikini got too big blah 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 you know man i'm just thinking there's so many divisions for her women it's like yeah. it's a lot what what is there six Seven. Hold on. Yeah, Bikini, I know. I wellness, seven. fitness, figure, women's physique, bodybuilding. Six. And then for guys, there's four. Four, right? Uh, uh, no, men's men's physique, physique. Classic physique classic and bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, oh, 212. 212. Yeah, four. 212. And you can't even do 212 to your pro. Okay. There's no 212s yeah. in NPC. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think they could probably put another men's yeah. division. I wouldn't mind that. And I think for guys, it's, it's really hard because... There is no like bikini equivalent for the men, yeah. you know, like you have to be pretty massive just to even do <laughs> men's physique. They're jacked, man. They're yeah. jacked. Yeah. Remember when you used to be a, a decent sized men's physique competitor? There was the first year they told me I was too big. Yeah. They back told in me, the day. They told me my first year, um, they're like, yeah, your back's too big. You should just, you know, do a couple pull-ups throughout the, this is literally, <laughs> this is judges feedback. Just do a couple pull-ups throughout the week and like, just keep it kind of. You know, just let it go down a little bit because it's just too like rigid. It's too like bulky, like like a kind of bodybuilder esque. And I was like, oh, they're like, yeah, it's really like a fitness model thing. You don't want like meat on the back. It's just just keep it fit. You know, like like an athlete. And I was like, really? I was like, all right. So yeah, I remember. I remember. I was like, that's crazy. Dude. So I was like, that's cool. I can do that. That's 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 fine. I don't have any problem with that. And then it was like a year later. Like, you your back needs to be way bigger. <laughs> like I like ever that I was chasing it. But yeah. uh yeah, so there's. You know, um, I would agree with, I, th- I think that in the men, they could do a, well, I'm curious what they're going to do with this side. This yeah, thing. so they did put weight caps on yeah. it. So that's going to be interesting to see. Um, but I'm I'm curious though, because even, I mean, I would assume that even with the weight caps and stuff, they're still going to be, it's not like you can veer too far away from the current Olympia. You know what yeah. I mean? It'd be like a complete 180 of like, oh, no, just kidding. You have to be 30 pounds lighter. You yeah. know, I don't see them doing that or anything. I mean, did they come out with the actual Not yet. requirements yet? No? Out. I think it's coming out after. after is, it come, is it coming out? It would make sense. I forget. He did say it, but I forgot when. But he was taking weights. They started taking weights at the mile high. Yeah. So um, they're getting data. Yeah. yeah. So I don't see them veering too far away because that, that would be so messed up. Like, yeah, yeah you are the Olympia, but now you have to come with 30 <laughs> pounds lighter. So. I, I don't know. I feel like so, it would be nice to have like a men's bikini equivalent to where like somebody that was like an athlete in high school, but doesn't necessarily want to get like massive. Yeah. You know, I think that would be nice for you guys. Yeah. I would say in terms of, so in terms of just business, it makes sense to do it right. In terms of just business, you can increase the amount of potential pool that you have uh, your competitor pool to have that. But at the same time, it's, they run into a situation because you run into a really sticky situation when you're like making those decisions at top. And I understand it because you say, okay, but then it's, is it too easy to get in? Cause the, the access of entry should be difficult. This Absolutely. is physique competitions, true. right? That's very so true. what, at what point is it too hard or people being babies or what point are we really not listening to market demands and are those market demands valid? That's a good point. You know, so it's like, it's a tough one, right? It it's is a, tough. It's a tough one to really analyze, you know, it's really tough because then you got to look at the other divisions too, right? Because if I'm a men's physique guy and I've spent, let's say, five years building up this men's physique body and now they created a division which I look like when I started lifting, then you also don't feel as um, accomplished because the new divisions kind of waters down your division of what it takes to be a competitor, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so it's a, it's a tricky situation, but I do think – the men's physique, at least on the pro level, is is such an advanced physique that it would warrant probably a a, a fitness model division to come again or to come right and then stay there. 
But um, it's a hard decision still because of that, right? Right. Totally. So the bikinis, bikinis is one that people are, are really talking about. But it's, it's hmm. I feel the same way. Don't make it any yeah. easier. Don't do another because it's just gonna, it's the, just gonna grow. The, like mm. the thing is, bikini has it's gone farther. There's no denying that it's gone yeah. farther. It's gotten bigger. But it's not so much farther. That's yeah. the thing. I don't think people look at me in the gym and think I'm a freak. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Me- like, they probably think, oh, yeah, I could do that in a few years. <laughs> yeah. Like, men's physiques made leaps and bounds, right? But bikini, if you look at and I did a review on it a long time ago, it really didn't change too much in terms of the, the condition got a tiny bit tighter. Not a lot tighter. A tiny bit tighter. And honestly, just a tiny bit tighter for some athletes. Um, but then the tie-ins came in, and that's really what made it where it's more, where it's harder the tie-in part, because that added more dieting, that added more size to the glutes. So that one evolution made it really difficult for a lot of women. If you're not genetically like capable of getting those very good, and you just genetically really store a lot of body fat, that's where the where you get a lot of the issue running into. And so if they wanted to, they could pull that back a little bit, and that would make it more accessible for everyone again. Um, but it should still be hard. But that one's not, I don't see the warranted of a new division. Yeah, for that. I feel like yeah. if they make a division that's less than bikini, it's going to look like some of these other federations that I just look at some of these other federations and I'm just like, uh, I'm not, <laughs> not impressed if that makes sense. Um, but I think we need to keep it like, uh, like somewhat achievable, but hard to, to do. Yeah. Like I don't want mm-hmm. just to be like, oh yeah, that was this. It was easy. Like, you know, I want it to be challenging. I just don't want it to be like turned into some sort of pageant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's other, there's like other. A, or a, a bikini uh, hooter show or something. Yeah. You know? The problem is it, it does, it displaces a lot of athletes too. Because mm. if you, if they do a bikini, um, like there's one organization overseas they call Bikini Beach and they call it Bikini Trained. I think they call it. And so the problem is, is like once you create that division, of those two, it kind of opens the door for the current bikini athletes to make a decision, right? And so your choice is, okay, bikini trained. You're like, well, I'm already closer to bikini trained. That's pretty much where I'm at. But then that division evolves farther now. It kind of opens the window for yeah. more movement to it go. It divides even further apart, yeah. Yeah, versus just taking the current girls and saying, okay, tone it down a little bit. Because you can look at, I mean, you can look at some of the more muscular competitors. And there's been a few that I like talk about in my my videos but if you look at them just a few years ago they fit into the mold then they would just have stopped then they just pull back a little bit right so um yeah so it's going to be i'm curious what they'll do with that and i think that they usually make those like decisions at the bigger shows where if they're bringing someone a little softer or whatever like um they brought in the conditioning last year at the olympia i thought was was a good level of conditioning um the tie-ins came in a little sharper since 2019 19 it was were the was it 19 20 no, it was 20, like when, uh, yeah, it was 20, when, when the tie-ins really started coming in and it made that evolution. So it's not like that far, you know, you could always pull back just a tiny bit if they decide to do that. But um, yeah, so it just comes down to the market and, and how many competitors are actually doing it shows, if it's actually mm-hmm. shrinking, if it's warranted, or if you're making it too easy and people are just whining, right? So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a tough one, but yeah. it's, here's the thing. It's not supposed to be easy. That's it's, the, yeah. that's the problem, right? And we have to keep coming back to that. It's not supposed to be easy. I would... Uh, um, like me personally, I would, I loved the look of like, I, me personally, I love the look of the 19 bikinis, like 17 and 19. I thought was like perfect. Oh, um, geez, Adam. After <laughs> I won, I'm just kidding. I'm well, just it kidding. was evolved. So it was still, I didn't like my 2013 to 15 look either. It was, it's the thing is it was evolved past that. Right. Yeah. So it was still evolved, but it didn't get to where it's so hard right where people are like now complaining like no one's complaining in 2019 right no yeah. one was saying oh this is too hard and it's like no one was saying that now you're getting some people saying because they can't get tie-ins and they can't get that so i think that was like the perfect spot right but it's not that far past it and even some shows now you might get that so it's mm-hmm. like it's a tough one man and if the problem is is too is that one um all the judges need to be on the same page as one, but two, all the athletes need to be on the same page too. And they got to show up without those things. Right. right. Like you go to a pro show, you find 10 girls without tie-ins now. Good luck. Right. And then, and, and, and then how's the judge going to reward that when everything else isn't as good as, you know, Ashley shows up with tie-ins, tiny waist, all this. Some girl shows up. We don't know who she is. She can't get tie-ins. She shows up, but that girl now beats Ashley just because her tie-ins are like, how do you do that? How do you yeah, warrant that as true. a judging scenario? So it's, it's a whole cluster of things to, to do. So yeah, it's a tough question. It's a, uh, hopefully that opens the, uh, 
the, like you guys can kind of see a little bit of what actually has to go into that decision. Yeah. I don't make that decision. Um, but it's, it's a lot tougher than saying, okay, let's just do the new division. Yeah. Like it's a lot tougher. There's all these things that happen after it, you know? Right. I like where we're at. I don't think we need another division. Not the ladies. We're good. We're yeah, good. We I got, we, we got six divisions. Yeah. And <laughs> it'd be, good. the shows would be so long too. I know. But the, 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 the men's physique, I could see more yeah. warranted. More and you guys only have four divisions. So it's like, well, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that Hope would and pray. So Adam can get back on stage. Dude, I, if they had like a men's fitness model division, I would do it. It'd be better than getting punched in the face all week. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> like doing boxing down. I'm like, my cumulative punches in the face weekly is like, I was telling Ashley, it was like in one sparring round, it's like 20 times you get hit like in the head at some point, like throughout the week, it's like a hundred to 200 times a week. <laughs> wow. Men's physique was a lot funner. Yeah. <laughs> was a lot you funner. just have to show up and look pretty, yeah. you know, yeah. like, Hey, yeah. What's up? chiropractors every week <laughs> <laughs> totally uh, so all right um so with we got any more on that any other things we should talk about mm. when it comes to this no no i think we did a, that was a fun a fun episode i like that as you always say i don't know i like these episodes they are, I like, they're fun they're i like fun. i like podcasting i don't know if i had Me too yeah if we only had a few listeners uh you know luckily it's had success it's been yeah. great so thank you Thanks guys for, for tuning that. in yeah but it's just a fun weekly conversation with it you. Is. It's like just sitting with my homie, talking with bikini, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's so. right. <laughs> so anyway, guys, talk to us uh, next week of, of always talking to the homies with Ashley and Adam. Next week, there will be a good podcast. <laughs> next week, I can assure you there will be a good podcast on with the homie. What's our new podcast called? Just talking with the homies. Yeah. With Ashley and Adam. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Cute. Talk, talk, Cute. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Bye.